the weather, the athletics are heating up. A three-game win streak has the green and gold building confidence. From quality at-bats with some clutch hitting to solid starting pitching and excellent work by the bullpen as Bob Melvin and the boys riding high. It was a good holiday weekend at the Coliseum, and the A's look to continue their win streak as they take on Joe Maurer and the Minnesota Twins. It's game two of three, A's and Twins next. It's a beautiful night for baseball. The A's have won three in a row thanks to yesterday's 3-2 to win over the Minnesota Twins. So they'll try to make it two in a row. Our old friend Kurt Suzuki's back in town. It's always great to see Kurt and Eric Surkamp back up from the minor leagues. And he will take the baseball tonight for the Athletics. So it's game two of the three-game series. It's the Twins and the A's coming up on CSN California. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball. Along with Ray Fossey, I'm Glenn Kuyper. Last year, Coco Chris played in a total of 44 games, Ray. Tonight, he's playing in his 43rd game. He looks healthy. Yeah. He's playing great. And uh, as we've always said, he's a big part of this offense. Well, they say when Coco goes, so do the athletics. And uh, it started really in Seattle. Big two-run double down the left field line. He's played extremely well. And it's important also because Josh Reddick has been on the disabled list. So Coco's been in there every day. He can hit. He can steal bases. He got his 300th earned the season up in Seattle and of course yesterday he led off the game a 1 0 fastball against the right hander and man he jumped on it first pitch and then just first home run for the athletics in the ball game on the first batter not a bad way to start Eric sir can't be sort of got that uh, Nashville <laughs> Oakland shuttle down his third time now with the A's and still looking for that first yeah. win as he makes his sixth start he just needs to try to pitch deep in the ball game he's on three on the season he actually has faced the twins out of the bullpen but not starting against them this will be the first time so I think from his standpoint with a very very healthy bullpen you used the back three yesterday but I think what Bob Melvin do try to get as much as they can out of the left-hander tonight and worry about trying to win tonight. Tonight's ball game, worry about tomorrow when they have to, but Sir Camp is important for the Athletics tonight. All right, Sir Camp for the A's, and the Twins will send the right handed pitcher Tyler Duffy to the mound. So that's your pitching matchup as the A's are looking for their fourth consecutive win. We'll have lineups and first pitch when we come back to the Coliseum right after this.
Rays Baseball on CSN California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. It's back. The Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack. Taste it before it's gone at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. Eric Zirkamp leading the A's out on the field for game two of this three game series. It's the A's and the Minnesota Twins game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is now open daily. Nice warm night 75 degrees with a pretty nice breeze and it is a very very comfortable night. The warm weather has kind of taken over the Bay Area. Yes it has. <laughs> so, he's won yesterday. Good ball game, good pitching, good defense. The A's a three to two win, so we'll see what the Twins lineup looks like tonight. Starts with Eduardo Nunez, hot hitter. The batting average of 338. Then Dozier at second, Maurer at first. Sano is the right fielder. Trevor Plouffe plays third. Robbie Grossman is in left field. Youngo Park is the DH. Kurt Suzuki is your catcher and just called back up for the minor leagues. Byron Buxton is in center. Eric Surkamp, who would like to go deep in the ball game. His longest outing so far this year is going against the New York Yankees, five and two thirds at Yankee Stadium. Did quite well. Unfortunately, in that game, uh, did not pick up the win. The A's did win in extra innings, but Sir Camp gets the chance to start again tonight, his sixth of this 2016 campaign. Defensively, Chris Burns and Coughlin in the A's outfield, Valencia, Simeon, Lowry, and Alonzo on the infield. And Steven Vogt is your catcher, and we are set. For baseball as Sir Camp kicks and deals and the first pitch is popped up. Center of the diamond. And Alonzo waits. He's got it. A one pitch, one out. First pitch, seven oh seven. Your umpires for tonight. Tim Timmons is calling balls and strikes. Mike Everett is the crew chief. He's at first. Pat Holberg at second. And Jordan Baker is at third. That is and Mike Everett. Position, Number two, Ryan We'd like to show you the crew chief because He's the guy who does the replay reviews. That's He's right. got to go put the headset on. He and the it's the umpire who made the call in question. And if it's at first base tonight, he can do it all by himself. That's right. He doesn't need any help. Here's Brian Dozier. Second baseman for the Twins. Twins are 15 and 35. Tied with the Atlanta Braves for the worst record in the major leagues coming into today. So it's been a tough first two months for Paul Molitor and his twins. They just cannot seem to get going. They had won three in a row until the A's beat them yesterday. And a, I don't know, surprising, maybe a little bit, Ray. They, they won 83 games last year, and if you remember, they were in the thick of the playoff chase as far as the wild card situation goes right up until the final weekend. Yeah, that's the disappointment because they had a lot of hopes for this year. And well, it was not foul tip. Dozier tagged at the plate. So Dozier is out, and here is the swing and a miss. The backdoor breaking ball just kept running in off the, the, the mitt position. of Stephen Bolt. See the, the break on the. Joe kind of a cutter slider and Dozier swung through the pitch a little bit off speed which is nice. Exmo brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. So two outs and here's Joe Maurer. First pitch to Maurer is in there for a strike. And the Twins last year 83 and 79 and when it was all said and done they missed the second wild card spot by three games. But they played meaningful baseball the entire year. But a different story this year. They have not been able to really put much of anything together. Tom Bernanski, the hitting coach, standing next to Paul Molitar. Of course, uh, Bernanski, one of those teams won the world championship. They won an 87 and 91. Lowry to his left and a good inning for Eric Surkamp. Three up, three down. Wins go quietly in the first. Bottom of the first coming up.
now the bottom of the first. So let's check out the athletics lineup. Coco Crip, Jed Lowry, Stephen Vogt, top three, then Valencia, Davis, Alonzo, Simeon, Coglin, and Burns. Tyler Duffy on the mound for the Minnesota Twins, and really not that overpowering with any of his pitches. Fastball, low 90s, but he will throw a two and four seam fastball. He hit it for the first time. He likewise against the Athletics, so a few new names for the Twins in the rotation and the bullpen for 2016. So Tyler Duffy faces Coco Crisp and Duffy's first pitch, just a touch outside. Crisp at 250 with five home runs, 21 RBIs. Didn't wait around yesterday. Let off the bottom of the first with the home run. 16th time in his career with a leadoff home run. Amazing. Been around the A's long enough to do it 14 times with the athletics. Talked about Coco in the open of our show and how staying healthy and having a nice year. This is the 16th consecutive game that he has been in the A's lineup. Had a collision yesterday with Chris Coglin in right center field, and fortunately, neither hurt seriously. Both stayed in the game. In athletics history, most leadoff home runs. I think it'd be Rick, tough for Coco to yeah, catch Ricky Rick, Anderson. Ricky's this year. safe, yeah, he's Maybe safe. Maybe next yeah, year. Yeah. <laughs> Strike, and now it's 3 2, 43. Urban Santana, second pitch of the game from his standpoint. High fastball, Coco didn't take it, took it out for a home run. Tanner went seven, pitched well, but not well enough. Dozier has it, and he flips to first one away. This is the collision that Ray was talking about. Scary for a moment. That's about Dozier. Hit to right center, and looked like the left knee of Coglin hit Coco, and right there they kind of collided. Fortunately, as Coglin got the ball back in, it was a sack fly, but got the ball back in, and then went down. Coco was telling Nick Paparista, who was. Hustling out. I'm okay. I'm okay. Check on Chris, who was hobbling a little bit. Both back in there tonight. Look like Coco had just enough time to kind of brace himself. Yeah. Something that Salvador Perez could not do in Kansas City. Exactly. Unfortunately for the, the Royals, he's only out seven to ten days with a quad contusion. 2-0 to Jed Lowry hitting 306 with 18 RBIs. Couple of hits yesterday, scored a run. His sixth game back since coming from the disabled list. Looped foul down the left field line. A's with a 23 and 29 record sitting on that three game winning streak. So game number 53 after tomorrow the A's will be a third of the way through the season already. Play the game yesterday Alonzo with the bat of Joe Maurer. He's played some defense and it showed definitely in yesterday's game. There's a line drive and a base hit center field Buxton. Gets it back in in a one out single. Twins defense tonight has Grossman in left, Buxton in center, Sano in right. Kluth, Nunez, Dozier, Maurer third to first. Kurt Suzuki is your catcher. There's Kurt. Back in the lineup, had a little, I guess, a possible concussion, yeah. but it ended up not being a concussion. He went through the, what do they call it, the protocol? Uh, yes, the. <laughs> Something he said, I don't want to ever do again. Concussion test, and but he had a couple of hard shots within a couple of weeks, and seemed to affect him a little bit. The numbers for vote: 258 with four homers and 12 RBIs. Vote had a double yesterday, one for four. 
Valencia to follow here in the bottom of the first. Now this was Saturday. Kurt Suzuki behind the plate and Ooh. direct hit. And then when it's a direct hit like that. Whew. That's not good. Now he, he said he, he felt OK but then when he got down the catching position in his head mm. everything started bobbing around. Plouffe may have a play. He will have a play. He gets there, stops, makes the catch. And that's the key to what you just said yeah. is perfect. You get there, you don't drift. <laughs> he did he it got, right. got under the ball, settled, and made the play. He made a pitch run yesterday. But hustle to get under the ball, and that way, if it does move, which it usually comes back towards the playing field, able to catch it easily. So with two outs, it's Danny Valencia. Valencia had 328 with seven home runs, 18 RBIs. Pant legs up high for Danny Valencia tonight. I can't recall seeing no. Danny no. Valencia with his pant legs up high. He's got the Air Jordans on, though. <laughs> got a good clean look going tonight. You think Air Jordans weren't made for baseball as well? There they are. I read $2 billion worth of shoes sold with the Jordan. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, whatever they paid him for that, it was worth it. <laughs> because now you see baseball players wearing yeah. what, 30 years later, 25 exactly. years later. 2 0 pitch is outside, and now it's 3 0. Well, Chris Davis in the on deck circle. Then all breaking balls. Yesterday he swung on three and zero, oh, and he has been swinging three and zero, oh, as has Chris Davis. And we'll see if the green light is given again. Seeing all breaking pitches, you'd have to figure if he's going to get three and zero oh with three breaking pitches. If the fourth is a fastball and he has a green light, it'd be exactly what he's hoping for. He missed outside, and Valencia takes the walk. Two on, two out for Davis. So he has done damage on the 3 0 pitch. That just was not hittable. So he laid off it. So here's Chris Davis tried to give the A's an early lead. Breaking ball tapped over the mound towards short. Nunez charges, cannot make a clean play, and the A's are going to have the bases loaded. It'll go as a base hit. Uh, Nunez only one opportunity, and that was to bury in the ball, playing back, and just kept slowing down. Chris Davis usually when he makes contact, gets hit hard. This time, hit about as slowly as you can imagine. And look at the ball into his hand was Nunez, but could not hang on. He was not going to get Chris Davis anyway. The only possibility is throwing the ball past the first baseman Mauer. So a chance for Yonder Alonso. First pitch hit hard, but right at Nunez, the shortstop. On the first side, retired. So the A's leave them loaded, and we're going to the second. No score, A's and Twins.
This in California is brought to you by AAA. What does your insurance do when it's not doing insurance? Well, it should do more. Go to AAA.com for details. Top of the second, no score between the A's and the Twins. So the final day of May, head into wonderful month of June tomorrow. So some teams and some players are looking forward to getting out of May. And some guys could stay in May for a long time, just depending on how well things are going. Well, if your name is Trevor May, you stay there a long time. You know. That's a good point. He does not have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> or Milt May or Carlos May or That's Lee right. May. Those are some guys you played again. Yeah. The Twins are 8 and 18 in the month of May. The A's are 10 and 17. So both these teams will be ready to move into June. These will move on to the road. Three in Houston over the weekend, two in Milwaukee Tuesday and Wednesday, and then three in Cincinnati. So. Five interleague games on the road coming up on the next road trip. 3 1 pitch to Miguel Sano, and it's a leadoff walk. So the big power hitter takes a walk. First base runner for the Twins. And then here's Trevor Plouffe. Batting in the fifth position, third baseman, number 24, Trevor Plouffe. Trevor Plouffe a little banged up, hurt his knee yeah. last week. So I didn't start yesterday, but surprisingly was sent in to pinch run. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good call. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a bad knee, but he got in there to pinch run. And Plouffe hitting just 246 with three home runs and 11 RBIs. And the Twins are going to need a lot more from Trevor Plouffe. Last year, he had 22 home runs, 86 RBIs, and 35 doubles. That's a pretty good season. And you could buy with Dozier. Yeah. And then what they expect to get out of That's right. Sano. And there's your shift on the left side. And a huge hole on the right side with Alonzo holding the runner at first. Well, yeah. I mean, I think the Twins are thinking coming into this year. OK, so Plouffe, Dozier, good solid players. Both had good years last year. Mm -hmm. We know what Joe Maurer is going to give us. Miguel Sano looks like a, a middle of the order hitter. Well, that's that's a decent middle four right there. Yeah. But two of them are struggling. Sano is still trying to figure it out. And thus. The team starts to struggle. So the shot of Paul Molitor, of course, uh, a great player, 3,000 plus hits. And he's got to be looking at this shift and saying, that whole right side of the infield, and, you know, just maybe telling these guys, just serve it out there. You'd had 4,000 hits oh, well, if you yeah. saw that. <laughs> so look at last year, 30 oh, wow. and 19 on this date, and they were leading the AL Central. I mean, they really had a pretty nice season last year. Valencia has it out at second. Nice turn by Lowry, and that's a double fly. Lowry made sure he handled the throws a little bit low, and he also knew that he had time. He did not rush it. And it was Lowry taking the throw, and you're right, because he stayed on the bag. Didn't have a chance to come through the bag, but he also stayed on the outfield side, which a runner really is not allowed to go get him. So that helped, but a strong throw from underneath. Short stomp saw, strength on the right side. So that time, the ship played perfectly, actually, with the ball hit hard to third base. So with two outs, it's Robbie Grossman. Grossman is a switch hitter. We saw him with the Houston Astros last couple of years. Started the season in the Indians organization. 
That one hit toward the right field line. Coglin moving over. Coglin is going to watch it, and that's a fair ball. And Grossman is going to stop at second. Coglin says, I don't think so. First base umpire's Mike Everett. And he had a long way to look, and Coglin was looking right at it. It looked like it actually did land fair. I thought so too. Yeah, yeah and they, as Coglin looked right down at it. Let's check. Yes, it's it on did. the line. It's on the chalk line. And then it bounced up. It's a ground rule double going into the seats, but right there is. Right in the seventh position. Kyle let the ball bounce back, but see the white chalk? That's a pretty good indication that's fair. That's maybe what Mike Everett saw. So it is a double. And here is Young Ho Park. First pitch to Park is up and away. There it is. Park hitting 214 with nine home runs and 17 runs batted in. He doesn't get cheated either. That's uh, just watching some of the the highlights, the film of him and. First base open, maybe a consideration for Stephen Vogt and Sir Camp to pitch him carefully. A little bit low. Did not play in yesterday's game. The Twins gave him a four year contract. Not for a huge amount of money, $12 million. They did have the rights fee to, to pay, which was about the same amount, $12 million. So they have a twenty four million dollar investment. So they need something out of him as well. Got off to a good start. From Seoul South Korea. There's a strike two and two the count. Another low strike called by Tim Timmons. You have to wonder how the umpire is going to have to adjust next year with a higher strike being called. Maybe not so much the low one. Good swing there by Park. So Stephen Boat may have said that got too much of the play. Yeah. Now this is a two strikes and <laughs> he attacked it. A little late. Not quite like Dayoli. No, <laughs> with not the, quite. With Seattle, but I don't know that they know the difference with two strikes and no strikes and be aggressive all the time. Grossman has good speed. He's at second base. And they're going to meet again. I think this is going over the signs twice because uh, Stephen vote using the outside indicator the chest protector shin guards mask and then giving finger signs. Usually if they do that the outside is an indicator and then you go to the finger signs. And there's a line drive right field line base hit and the twins are going to take the lead as Grossman comes in to score. Park digging for second. He's got himself an RBI double. Well, nothing, Minnesota. Hanging curveball stayed with it, and you know you, you made a good point, Cap, because he said just a little bit late on, on the swing, fastball, on his fastball, and so a breaking ball comes in. And if he's a little slow and late on a fastball, the curveball is a perfect pitch for him to do exactly what he did, especially with two strikes. And two outs on the move was Grossman scoring easily with the ball down the corner. So the big double play, I mean, that was huge after the leadoff walked in the double play, but back to back doubles. Both to right field. So for Park, his 18th RBI, and here's Suzuki.
Suzuki hitting 200, a homer and 10 RBIs. And for Kurt now in his ninth year in the big leagues. Got to the big leagues in 2007 with the Athletics. In we Houston, remember that. In Houston, yeah. Texas. Been blocked by Stephen Vogt with pitch in the dirt by Sir Camp, but Kurt showed up in Houston, 07. And started catching because Jason Kendall wanted out. He said, and he moved on to Chicago, but. Suzuki's done a good job with the A's and of course being behind the plate as often as he has he knows how to handle a pitcher and also to block balls in the dirt. Most games caught in Oakland A's history Kurt Suzuki second and Terry Steinbach. So they just threw my name in there just you're a, you're, a you're a courtesy. In, you know what you're a top tenor uh, uh, the courtesy huh. <laughs> I'm not happy that Jim Essien is in front of you. I remember Jim Essien with the White yeah. Sox. Nothing against Jim Essie, but I just like Ray Fossey. Well, he was he was probably here, and I know he was here longer, so <laughs> it's a big difference. Foul pop up, and Alonzo is there. Side retired. Twins get a two out RBI hit. So bottom of the second coming up, it's one nothing Minnesota. Baseball live with the MLB.com at bat app. Stay up to the moment, any moment with game day, live game video highlights, statcast news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, number one app for live baseball on your phone and tablet. Beautiful night here at the Coliseum. And the Twins leading one to nothing over the Athletics. The A's loaded the bases with two outs, could not score. The Twins got a two out hit. Knock in their run. Danny Valencia had a four pitch walk, and Davis and Alonzo swung the first pitches. I mean, it's sometimes, you know, you get a pitch in, in the liking, the pitcher's trying to throw a strike, but Davis ended up getting a base hit on an infield hit, and Alonzo ground out. I mean, it's okay to zone in on a certain pitch, and it's a question of whether. Duffy and Suzuki were pitching carefully to Valencia because they did not give him anything close to hit. Simeon Coglin and Burns for the ace. Simeon at 222, 10 home runs, 23 RBIs. Big curveball from Tyler Duffy, the 25 year old right hander. He's probably primarily a fastball, two and four seam fastball, and a curveball pitcher. Occasional change up, but there's your curveball. And it's lined to left in front of Grossman. He thought about it. Yep. 
And decided against it, which from his standpoint is probably a good idea. Hanging curveball to Marcus Simeon. Hit the ball yesterday. It looked like it was going to go out. Hit the top of the left center field wall. He said he didn't hit it well enough to get out. Maybe he was thinking about going to the Warriors game. Yeah. Congratulations to the Warriors. What a what a story. Down three games to one. Awesome. I have to say that silent and quietly because Jordan Baker's from Oklahoma. Is Third he? Base home play. Well, you know what? He can become a Warriors fan <laughs> if he wants. <laughs> Eddie Montague, of course, our umpire friend who's a supervisor and watching these guys. He said he told Jordan Baker, said, bring me a T-shirt that's left on the seat. So he brought him a warrior. He got him. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I saw Eddie carrying him in today. Well, what a story. So Thursday, right? Yeah. Game one of the NBA Finals. So the Cavaliers and the Warriors for the second year in a row. Cavs had to stay in Cleveland because they didn't know where they were going. I guess that's right. One and one to Chris Coughlin. Coughlin shoots one foul. Got it all covered. Steph Curry and an A's cap. Foul. Well, we're told by our fine producer, Delaire Lawor, is that it's the ninth time ever that a market has two teams in the championship, NBA and the NHL, and NBA and NHL running at the same sure. time, obviously. So, so with the Sharks in the Stanley Cup Finals and the Warriors in the NBA Finals, only the ninth time that has ever happened. So it should be quite a week stretch. What was the number on the number of times a team has been down three to one in the conference championship come back to win. I mean that's not a lot not more than ten. I know that ten is it ten. Thanks guys. I knew it hadn't been many. Coglin bounces one nice play by Maurer gets the out at second on to first and the ball is thrown away into the twins dugout. So the A's are going to get a base runner at second base. Now let's see if Duffy gets over there because the throw coming to Duffy as he was actually on the bag but the throw was behind him so he did his job. Important thing here is for the pitcher to get the bag as quickly so he's not having to right, try to reach back and the infielder has a target to throw to and he did. Mm -hmm. Nunez had. And a good job at Duffy getting to the bag, and then the throw was behind him. If he's on the bag, or the throw's on the bag, it's a double play. Yeah, that that that's all on the shortstop, yeah. but obviously he got the air. I think that's one of those. And now you you see how the game develops, right? You see if the A's take advantage of that. Yeah. That's a double play that has that's to right. be turned. It's just like uh, over the weekend with Kinsler making the air yeah. on Sunday. And that will fall and it bounces by Sano. I have no idea what he was doing. Coglin will score and Burns is going to end up at third. So a bit of an adventure out there from Miguel Sano. Not only did he it just didn't look like he really went after it and then it bounced past him. And it looked like off the bat should have been a catchable ball. Breaking ball down inside. The Billy Burns so no went after it and they say it is kind of an adventure out there for him but he just went laterally saw it and laterally went after it instead of charging after it then the funny spin on the ball took off on him and that's the wrong guy Billy Burns to have a ball get past you. Well yeah if, if you're going to back off that's fine well you cannot yeah. let it bounce past you if you back off. So Burns gets the triple he gets his fifth RBI and we have a 1 1 game and the A's did take advantage of the mistake by the by the twins on the throw back from Nunez. But Coglin at second and Sir Camp who gave up a two out 
RBI double back to back doubles to give the Twins the first run. Now has it back even, trying to take the lead. One and one the count to Crisp, who grounded out to second. First inning. Swing and a miss. A fastball with a little movement away from Chris. Looked like that was one that Coco is thinking about pulling and see if he goes to the no stride and thinks opposite field. But you can see he waits a long time. See how Suzuki handles it with a curveball. And he got him swinging. Coco chased a pitch that was down. Hmm. Well, third ball out of the strike zone. And that's a little surprise because Coco usually finds a way to at least put the ball in play. It's a big gift run at third so far is still there. So it's up to Lowry. Lowry had a base hit in the first inning. Remember, he is 14 for 29 with runners in scoring position this year. That's a 483 batting average. So the guy you want up there, first pitch called wow. a strike, wasn't it? That's what he called, a delay call by Tim Timmons, but he did call it a strike. <laughs> I think that just said everything. That look on Jed's face. Fastball is inside, one and one to count. Volt to follow, a run in for the A's. Jets first at bat yesterday, similar to tonight, left center off Irvin Santana. And tonight off of Duffy trying to get Burns in from third. Went in there again, two and one. So pitch number 40 coming up from Tyler Duffy. Toward first, Maurer has it. He'll step on the bag. Side retired. So a a hit or make that a run on two hits and a costly error by the Twins. So we're headed to the third. It's a one-one game. California is brought to you by Naturally Strong, Naturally Beautiful Humboldt Redwood Lumber and Timbers. Visit GetRedwood.com. 1-1 game. It's the top of the third. 
Here is Byron Buxton. One of those names that you've heard a lot about in the last couple of years. One of the baseball's top prospects. Has struggled at the major league level. But at some point, it's going to all kick in. And then he's going to be really good. It was the 2012 draft when the Twins took Buxton second. The Astros had the first pick and they took Carlos Correa, so they're happy with Not they chose. And Santana, who played yesterday, injured his hamstring, placed on the DL, and Buxton called up. Getting another opportunity. And let's not forget, Buxton is just 22 years old. So he is still figuring it all out. 6 290 pounds. And last year he played in 46 games for the Twins, hit 209. He has got terrific speed. Good pitch there on the inside corner strike three call. Strikeout number two for Sir Camp. Uh, Steven Vogt popped up from behind home plate. Must have heard the call from Tim Timmons. And before Buxton could really do much of anything, Steven Vogt was throwing the ball around the infield. He knew it was a strike. Confirmed by the umpire. And you have said many times that <laughs> umpire usually gives a verbal. Yeah. Doesn't like this. the pitch, yes. even though we may not hear it. He doesn't like this. None of them like this. Yeah. It's all right. Let those guys guess up there. We like them. Nunez popped out to first to lead off the game, and he hits one in the hole. Diving play by Simming to throw to first, and it's a little offline, and Nunez has a hit. Nice play by Marcus Simeon. A nice dive, and then for Marcus Simeon learning to do this. Catch the ball, but then pop up quickly, and he does a good job. And just the speed of Nunez, he's got to beat it out anyway. Good idea. And a good play by Alonzo at first base coming off the bag. Burns is getting surrounded out there. <laughs> and then he is. I think he's a little banged up at first, but now he's okay. He just extended his hitting streak to seven games. He's been a hot hitter for the Twins, so he's got a one out single. And that hits Dozier. So just like that, the Twins have two on and one out. Breaking ball just kept running in, and those are no protection on the left side, at least nothing that shows, and got him in the bicep tricep area as he tucked the arm in. I wonder what's out in feeding frenzy in center field. What is going on? Yes. So that's their, uh, too many seeds, right? Sunflower well, seeds. Well, it's, it's supposedly like, like not to shells, but. <laughs> That's camera work there, man. <laughs> Here's Joe Maurer. Two on, one out for Maurer. First pitch is a strike on the outside corner. Maurer grounded out to second in the first inning. Birds have now decided it's going to be Coco Crisp that we're going to bother. Hit high and foul. 
seems like Joe Maurer's been around forever. He's 33 years old now. In his 13th year in the big leagues. Signed one of those contracts that not many players get. It wasn't a hometown discount either. He's he's from the yeah, area, but no one was not. It, uh, good for him. Jomar has 1,747 career hits, fifth most in Minnesota Twins history. Kirby Puckett, Rod Carew, Tony Oliva, and Kent Herbeck. Kirby Puckett did his in 10 years, and then unfortunately, glaucoma and shortened his career, but he got the 10 in. Talk about some some great years for Kirby Puckett. And a curveball is looped into left field, the base hit. And then they're going to wave Nunez. No, they're not. They put the brakes on. Throw comes into Valencia, and the bases are loaded. So Maurer just hung in there on that breaking ball. Hey, Drove it to left field. He's going for a seagull and figured might as well go where it's. Well, it's in between them and it scattered them. And then he's got the good jump and Gene Glenn decided to hold him up. Thought they would send him. I did too. Opposite field hits. Yeah. No surprise there. Joe Maurer has always been able to. Cover whatever pitch is thrown wherever it is thrown. So here is Miguel Sano. Well, holding up Nunez might have been because of this guy because he is a strong young man. Questionable defense but who cares the way he swings the bat. First pitch is check swing. Ah, there you go. They didn't get all of them. You know, they have a vacuum cleaner. Just vacuum. You know, get that portable vac out there. You know what? I'm going to tell Clay Wood you said that. Well, I mean, he, they use it. I've, I've, or a blower, a vacuum. Well, maybe the blower. But they've done a lot of seeds. They, they could have right seeds out of the clubhouse. And that one is drilled foul. So Sano has plenty of power. What also yeah. happens here, Ray, is he strikes out a lot. He has struck out 71 times in 178 at bats. That's a lot. Yeah. So that's an opportunity for Sir Kent. And you'd probably rather have the strikeout now versus having put the ball in play because the way he swings and as hard as he hits the ball, don't necessarily want to take a chance for two unless he's hit right up somebody. Or two. That's ball is high. Snow is he's a big fella. Get out of his way. 6 4 260 and he's only 23 years old. Vote sets up inside. Close pitch. Well, Sir Camp went in there. I mean he yep. got it where vote asked for it. Just didn't get the call. And maybe a little up, who knows, but it's about belt high. And there's a shot. Valencia, what a play. Out. Safe. And Sunel comes up limping. He may have pulled a hamstring. And Paul Muller saying, what next? Yeah, ain't that the truth? Nunez scores, so the Twins are going to take the lead, but Sano hustling down the line. And take a look at it yourself. Well, he crushed it, and Valencia took a couple of steps to get rid of it. Well, man, that doesn't look good.
Looks like right as he kind of jumped, at jumped the at the bag yeah. a little bit. And as you see, he runs pretty well. Yeah. For a guy who's 260 pounds, picks up his 37th RBI. I think that look, I and mean, he was asked, "Does it hurt?" And he goes, "Yeah, yeah. more than you know." <laughs> wow. So okay. he is playing right field. He is not the DH. Paul Molitor just said that look as he got out on the warning track, saying, "What do we have to deal with next?" That's Oswaldo Arcia. He is an outfielder, and so he's going to get loose a little bit. Well, it's amazing that as hard as that ball was hit, that it wasn't a double play. It was hit so hard, it knocked Valencia <laughs> off balance a little bit. Yeah, and I think that's what slowed it down a little bit. But attention, please. He made a great play, keeping it from going into left field. Of course, if it's in left field, the big man doesn't have to hustle down the line to avoid the double play. As well done, Arcia. Now running for Miguel Sano. So here's Plouffe. Runners at the corners. And he swings and misses. So Dozier at third. Arcia, who is the pinch runner, and Arcia will stay in the game in right field. Well, there's been a couple of hits and a hit batter. Missed outside. A lot of pitches again for Surkamp. It's been one of the issues for him yeah. in really all of his starts he's about to throw his 50th pitch and he only threw eight in the first inning I think what you see too with Sir Camp is you see the the hitters a lot of foul ball yeah. He's got a couple of strikeouts tonight. The ratio's not bad. And that hit Ploof. A breaking ball down and in, and Ploof is limping to first. That's the second hit by pitch for Eric Surkamp. Did he swing? No. Now batting, number 36, Robbie Grossman. So now the bases are loaded and it's Grossman. Well, it really hurts. He had two strikes on him and two strikes on the hitter and then not able to put him away. Fernando Rodriguez, first up. Pitch to Grossman is hit hard. Simeon has it, flips to second at a nice play to end the inning. So a run for the Twins when it's all said and done. So the Twins lead two to one as we go to the bottom of the third.
day at the ballpark. Log on to athletics.com slash tickets and use coupon code DAD. That's D-A-D. -D, to receive $10 off field level tickets to see the A's take on their AL West rivals, the Los Angeles Angels. Discounted Father's Day tickets are subject to availability, so make plans right now to treat Dad to an afternoon of baseball Sunday, June the 19th. Stephen Vogt leading it off. First pitch to vote is in the first strike. So there's Arcia who stays in the game. Vote Valencia and Davis here in the bottom of the third against Tyler Duffy. Stephen Vogt was at the game last night. Every time, every time he heard a whistle, he jumped up. Yeah, he wanted to be rough. <laughs> How'd you like to be an NBA ref? That would be uh, pretty close to an impossible job. Yeah. They still have three? They have three, <laughs> and really, it's probably not enough. A little flare, and that'll work. Grossman grabs it, and Vote has a single. A broken bat, but that's okay. Yeah, I'll take it. Served it off the end of the bat, and ball running away from Stephen Vogt, and did serve it out to left field. And he'll take a hundred of them. Stephen Vogt would like to get a new bat from Steve Vucinich, and probably Vuce not afraid to order more for him. So that is hit number five for the A's, and here's Valencia. The month of May, 351 with seven home runs for Valencia. So he and Chris Davis have put on quite a show this month. Nice to get five and three games. Which is what Valencia did in St. Petersburg. This is badly 2 0. Oh. Valencia walked in the first inning. Yeah, Valencia's weekend in St. Petersburg was one of the better power displays we've seen in quite a while. Because none of them were cheap. Breaking ball on 2 and 0, and it's in first drive. I shouldn't say cheap because remember I said a couple days ago <laughs> there's no such thing as a cheap home run. They were they were all very well hit. Impressive. Well over 400 yeah. feet. One pitch missed outside with a 91 mile an hour fastball. Just like Billy Burns said, I just wanted to find a way to get on base to bring up the hot hitter. And Odor said the same thing when the the Rangers were in town before Desmond hit the two run home run. He came back and won that with a grand slam walk off. Valencia drives on the right. That's hit well. Garcia's back. He's at the wall, and that baby's gone. Valencia goes the other way, and the A's grab the lead right back. Noteworthy, two opposite field hits in the inning, counting for two runs. Stephen Vogt. His line drive to left field, and this line drive by the right handed hitting Valencia to right field. So, a good shot. So, we saw him do that against the lefty, Dana Evelyn, in St. Petersburg that weekend, but just against the righty and left the ball up. Valencia, opposite field. Chris Davis got a fastball, swings and misses. So, eight home runs for Valencia, and that's how it breaks down. His second one to right, one to straight away, and five to left. So he now has eight home runs and 20 RBIs. The difference of the difference of this pitch, look at the location, how it's up in the zone, and Valencia not trying to pull it. I mean, that's belt high away. And the difference of it being down around the knees versus up where it was, it's a ground ball or a line drive. Instead, it's a home run. 
Silo. It's up there somewhere. Grossman has found it. So that's out number one. Wow. Can a pop up have backspin? <laughs> you can. I think we just saw it. Now batting. First baseman. So that'll bring up Yonder Alonzo. Alonzo grounded out with the bases loaded in the first inning. A's have grabbed the lead back. It's three to two. First pitch floats outside. They could change up at 83 miles an hour from Duffy. You know, one thing with all the the numbers, all the statistics about percentage of pitches thrown. You can look at what Duffy does tonight and Kurt Suzuki and how he's calling the game. He's really kind of going away from what the percentage percentages have said about Duffy and how he uses the fastball and the curve, but he's using all of his pitches tonight. A lot of it's because Suzuki is calling the game. 62% fastballs, 35% curves. Very few changeups. That's his pitches tonight. And that's a good sharp breaking ball there for his second strikeout. So two away here in the bottom of the third. And both strikeouts on this same pitch. This one a little bit higher than one Chris got, but still got the same result. A swing and a miss. So here's Simeon who opened up the second inning with a base hit. Good curve there by Duffy. And that fastball at 92 miles an hour. So maybe not where exactly where Kurt Suzuki wanted it. Good veteran catcher. Taking care of his 25 year old right hander, yeah, especially yes. after he just gave up a home run. If you're facing a team for the first time, you rely on your catcher and not seeing very much shaking tonight by Duffy with Suzuki. Oh, and they said a swing. Simeon can't believe it. So they check and Mike Everett said you went around and the side is retired but Danny Valencia with his eight home run eighth home run of the year he goes the other way and the A's now have a three to two lead.
wins two, top of the fourth inning. Good effort there. Danny Valencia with a home run. Give the A's the three to two lead. Miguel Sano left the game with a hamstring strain. Is what we're what? being told. Hamstring strain. He said it real fast. <laughs> said it twice. That's it. <laughs> Popped up. Alonzo backpedaling. He's got it. What's so young Hope Park goes after the first pitch. Seems like they always say strain, regardless of what the injury and by the way, it's torn. <laughs> but we'll say strain. Now batting, number eight. So now Suzuki steps Suzuki. up. So Sir Camp would love to get a shutdown inning. He would love to get a quick inning as well. Suzuki fouled out in the second inning. Fouled out to the first baseman. First pitch in for a strike. So 54 pitches for Sir Camp. The longest outing of the year for Sir Camp. Five and two thirds, and it was at New York on the 19th of April. And there's a hit. So fifth hit of the night for Minnesota. But in that start in New York, he threw 99 pitches in those five and two-thirds innings. Now batting. Shift playing Suzuki to left field Byron to the left side and fouled out to first in his first at bat and this base hit to right field. You know else I didn't realize, Ray? This is the sixth start for Eric Sirkamp. The first five have all been on the road. Yeah. Buxton swings and misses. But the best outing he had, while it not in the starting rotation, was the next to last, actually the last exhibition game when Dubront went down. Sir Camp stepped in. The second inning pitched great. It's probably the reason he got the call when he did. That one hit in the air, right center. Hanging up for Billy Burns. And Buxton is retired. Two away here in the top of the fourth. And now to the top of the order, Eduardo Nunez. Now batting, number nine. So the second and the third inning got Sir a little bit, but he has a chance to kind of regroup if he can make quick work of Eduardo Nunez. Nunez, a pop out, and then he singled and scored in the third. He has 14 hits in his last 29 at bats. He's play Nunez pretty straight up. And he hits a liner right center field. Burns has to cut it off. He does. Suzuki will hustle for third, and Nunez has a double, and it's second and third, two outs. So Eduardo Nunez stays hot. Once he got over the head of Jed Lowry, it's shot into right center, and once again, Fernando Rodriguez gets up, pitch away, went with it perfectly. It's like the Metro Dome hit, although. He did not play there. That's ball just shot into right center. If he'd been the Metrodome on turf, he'd gone to the wall. Suzuki running hard. KC sent, but she's not going to because the Burns got to it quickly enough. Another big third out to get for Sir Camp. It's Brian Dozier. Dozier. Rolls it on the ground to the shortstop, Simeon. And that'll do it. So two hits and two runners stranded for the Twins. It's three two A's as we go to the bottom of the fourth.
Then here's our quick and loans rocket arms, and it's the American League strikeout leaders, Price and Verlander at the top, then Sale, and Rich Hill is fourth. Not far behind. So Rich Hill just two strikeouts behind Chris Sale. That should tell you what kind of year Rich Hill is having. And we certainly hope that he's able to make his next start. Yeah, he said he's a lot better. He's going to have a side start tomorrow. They had, of course, the off day on Thursday. They're determining whether to start him Friday or Saturday. Friday would be the normal turn. Saturday, an extra day. And maybe depends on how the outing is tomorrow. Seems to think he's okay. Well, Sonny Gray is going to throw a little bit today. He's going to yeah. throw. Again on Thursday it sounds like he's going to actually throw here before the team leaves on its road yeah. trip. Sonny is eligible to come off the disabled list on Sunday. I don't know that that'll happen. Yeah. Maybe but. It. If everything goes well it sounds like maybe at some point next week we'll see Sonny Gray back. Well, it depends on how. These guys feel after they throw. This was earlier today. Had some guys standing in while he was throwing. Not right there, but there was a few guys. <laughs> Took the screen down. Yeah. Maybe that's he's kind of pointing to that area that trapezius muscle. So three and two to Coglin leading things off here in the bottom of the fourth against Tyler Duffy. Curveball. He's done that pretty consistently with a couple of strikes. And that was a good one. So he got four strikeouts, including three in a row. Uh, Richie on Sunday and strikeouts again and again and the breaking ball working and Fastball. He actually had more strikeouts on fastballs than curveballs. I had it for six fastball strikeouts because he just kept looking curveball and kept throwing a fastball. How about a sidearm to make it. By the way, Cabrera didn't leave town without getting a hit against the A's in three games. But Rich Hill has been superb. 11 starts, eight wins. First pitch to Burns is a strike. Burns had a triple and an RBI in the second inning. Hit a really just a fly ball down the right field line that Sano could not catch, and then it bounced past him. Tapped foul, and the count is a one and two. Now this was Hill on. Sunday and it's the left groin and watch him lift the leg as he follows through and kind of a concerned manager came out and decided to shut him down. Dozier charges quick throw to first not in time. So Billy Burns with an infield hit. Uh, Dozier made it as well as he could, but the speed of Billy Burns, especially coming out of the box from the left side. And good to see Burns, especially hitting from the left side and really flying down the line. That's tremendous speed and running through the back. Dozier had a hop go a little bit to his left, still handling it nicely and really not even worthy of a review. So hit number seven. Twelfth infield hit of the year for Burns. So Coco Chris steps up. First pitch is a sinker low. So would Coco let Burns steal a bag? Get him in the scoring position. Get himself in the scoring position. 
Just might have to take a couple of pitches, and really, it's comparable when Dwayne Murphy hit behind Ricky Henderson. And Ricky would always tell Murph, swing, don't worry about taking pitches for me. But usually, as we've said, the, the runners have the green light. Go when they feel they have a jump. And as a left handed hitter, it's tough to see the guy take off. So you almost have to just take the pitches and hope that he does go within the time before he gets a couple of strikes. So it is 2 0 oh now to Chris with Lowry to follow. Not running and the ball's bounced to Maurer. Nice play. Fires to second out there. No throw to first. Duffy was there, but Nunez decided not to throw it. So Joe Maurer with another nice play. Now batting, second baseman, number eight. Uh, Maurer had yeah. no chance for him to get back, but you're right. But Nunez a second said, I made one air. Double clutch. Is he there? Is he there? Maybe he's thinking about throwing back to Maurer. Who is on the ground? In this case, with a second out, don't take a chance. And at least with Coco at first, he could steal second. Tried yesterday in the eighth inning, was thrown out. First pitch to Lowry, curveball, roll foul. Lowry has singled and he has grounded out. Lowry's single came in the first inning. He's got one in the second and two in the third. Valencia's home run. And now it's on two. Change up at 79 miles an hour. I think somebody borrowed the drums in right field. That's just not that same. Rhythm that we've heard in the past. But it was nice and quiet for a while, and you could actually hear people talking. What? <laughs> I can't hear you right really. What? Uh, I mean, that, that, that's just not the same. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, one and two to Lowry. Oh, another pitch out. Might as well. 0 oh, 2. Try another one. Chris has five steals. He's been thrown out four times. He pitched run on the curveball. Another foul past Mike Eldretti. Angels and the Tigers. Lots of runs. Angels. Leading the Tigers seven to two in the fourth inning. You no know, Trout is homered in that game. Sanchez and Santiago were the starters. If that's the case. I don't know, Sanchez got knocked around again. He has really struggled this year. It's well enough against the A's in Detroit Not to bad, pick up yeah. the game and the win, the Thursday series finale. Stephen Boat crushed a home run. Very deep in right field off Sanchez, but that's about it. Angels won last night five to one, so they're trying to make it two in a row over the Tigers. Everybody has won tonight in the AL West. Pops away from Suzuki, but he hustles after it. Well, Coco started actually when he started and then stopped. Once he stopped, he was done. Probably a good pitch to be able to run to get into score position. And Suzuki blocked it, but Coco had already committed to go back to first and he knew it. Now he goes for sure with the three and two. So the crowd making some noise. Coco runs and strike three call. And Lowry threw his bat. He thought it was ball four. He cannot believe it. 
So a couple of strikeouts for Tyler Duffy in the inning and we're on to the fifth. Three two A's. California is brought to you by Clipper. A million Bay Area Transit riders agree. Using Clipper is easier than using cash. Or you can take the Bay Bridge. Either way. 3-2, the A's lead the Twins. It is the top of the fifth inning. Eric Surkamp. Well, that was Had a decent fourth inning. <laughs> yes, eight pitches, matter of fact. And Fernando was up a couple of times. He has sat down, and now Ryan Doe gets up. So maybe the whole idea is put somebody up in the bullpen every inning. <laughs> and make sure Sir Camp can see them. Yeah, right? oh, yeah. So Maurer to lead it off. And he shoots one to left field. But right at Crisp. Wow. <laughs> Joe Maurer, one for three. And that'll bring up. Waldo Arcia, who's hitting for the first time. Last time Sir Camp started for the Athletics was in Boston whenever the Red Sox were on the schedule following the day night doubleheader against the Orioles and they need another starter. And the hit batter to Travis Shaw that never hit him and ended up putting on base before Bradley Jr. hit a home run. But I don't know that anybody in that series against the Red Sox. From the starting standpoint, had any success. Just not a very good series against the Sox, and they have continued to play well. 1 0 to Arcia. Alonzo backhands, long flip, Surkamp is there. Well executed, and it's the second out here in the fifth inning. That's good. The play was made because Jed Lowry was exactly behind Alonzo as he ranged to his right. He's had employed the shift, and now they're moving to the other side. So Trevor Ploof is the hitter. And also Alonzo sliding over quite a ways to his right. Fastball for a strike to Plouffe, who is hit into a double play and been hit by a pitch. And a quick 0 2. It's a Rich Hill curveball there, which is a good one. Back door froze Plouffe, took the total part of the plate. I think if Tim Timmons is calling the curveball, might as well throw a few. One and two to Ploof. The 
breakdown tonight. A lot of fastballs, but also the cut fastball. Foul territory. And nobody's going to get it. One hops up into the seats. Under Alonzo saying, you know, wasn't that much room in San Diego <laughs> down the right field line. Or any other place in the National <laughs> League or American <laughs> League where we've been. But you have a lot of chances to make pretty nice plays in that area. Don't sit behind that guy. Base hit right field. So Plouffe kind of waited on it. And he has his first hit. And that's seven hits for the Twins. Each team with seven hits. Number 36, Robbie Grossman. Well, the fastball's up, the fastball's away, and base hit to right field. Okay, I know we've talked about it. I know I've said it, and but at times when the count changes, maybe the defensive alignment changes, mm -hmm. or, because good hitters will try to do that. It's going to be trouble. Coglin racing in, and he'll play it out of hop, and it bounces by him. And they're going to wave Ploof home. Here's the throw to the plate. It's offline, and Ploof scores, and we're tied. Hmm. Something about that area down there. We've seen a bad bounce now for each team. Well, it's basically called overrunning the ball and taking the hop. And that last hit, well, it's not hit hard, but it's almost you just shut it down and take the hop the way it's going to bounce. The fact that it was inside out swing, it's going to spin funny anyway. But watch as the ball just starts down and it goes in, tries to stop, and he went straight after it instead of stopping. And trying to catch the ball on the rebound. It kicked and with two outs, able to go. And there's it's gonna happen, especially with the spin hitting the ball the way it did. So when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and auto service, your oil change tune-up and break experts. Your attention, please. The only two A's versus the Giants games of 2016 at the Oakland Coliseum win. Cross Bay rivals square off on June 29th and 30th. A's look to continue their winning ways against the Giants, having captured two of the last three season series. These interleague showdowns are always some of the most popular games of the year, so get your tickets today at athletics.com slash tickets. Four consecutive against the Giants, two in San Francisco, two here. And is it? Four game series total last year. The final three games at home were against the Giants. We're seeing those two and two series right now with yeah. the Mariners and the Padres and the Astros and the Diamondbacks. But they have to get on a plane. We do not. That's right.
So Eric Surkamp four and two thirds, eight hits, three runs, a walk, and two strikeouts. Got a tough break there. That really was not his fault. Now Dahl has to get Park. Great note there. Every inherited runner he has gotten when he has come into games, he has stranded. And these are big situations too yeah. because trying to do it again with the go-ahead run at second. And I think for any reliever outside of maybe your setup man and your closer, it's a very good stat to look at. Yeah, it's probably what they do look at and and you can go in to negotiate saying that my inherited runners were left on. And that's what every reliever wants to do because they do not want to have it be somebody else's run. This one high pop up straight below us. But generally, I mean, a closer's almost always going right. to come in to start an inning. And yeah. a lot of times the eighth inning guy is going to come right. in to start an inning. So nobody's going to be on base. But it's those sixth and seventh inning guys or in tonight's case, the fifth inning. And that's why Doolittle, what he did yesterday, yeah. coming in with runners at second and third with two outs facing Joe Mauer in great defensive play by Alonzo. That's a tough situation to come into. A little bit outside, three and two. Although Sean, as we just showed him, he looked a little chilly. That was warmer than that tonight. Yeah, he's just. He looks. <laughs> That's how we looked in Detroit. <laughs> it was cold in Detroit. <laughs> it was colder on the field. Was he throwing a slider after all fastballs? He did, and it was a dandy. And Park strikes out, but the Twins tie it on a single and a triple. Bottom of the fifth coming up. It's a 3-3 game. Hayes Baseball and CSN California is brought to you locally by Energy Upgrade California. Energy tips, rebates, and financing options are available at energyupgradeca.org. Not a bad night to be out there. Or here. Here, that's right. 3-3 three, three game, Hayes and Twins. Hayes looking for their fourth consecutive win. So a tight game. Maybe not the cleanest play game we've seen in a while, but it is a 3-3 game, bottom of the fifth. Vote fouls it straight back. Stephen Vote has fouled out to third, singled and scored. It's amazing what base hits and the spin and what they have a tendency to do to 
the outfielders and twice tonight seeing some similar play nine runs to score. Swing and a miss. Duffy with five strikeouts. He had one strikeout in the second, two in the third, and two in the fourth. Another hit for Vogue as he drills one up the middle. So he's two for three, and that gets us to our. Greater coverage of baseball, and that's brought to you by T-Mobile, getting you set for the Sunday or the weekend series in Houston. It'll be Jesse Hahn and Doug Fister on Friday. On Saturday, Rich Hill, Colin McHugh, and on Sunday, Kendall Graveman and Lance McCullers. So, our first trip to Houston this year. the start of long road trip after the weekend in Houston two in Milwaukee and then three in Cincinnati and then the A's come back home for a good home stand of four with the Rangers three with the Angels and there's another hit for Valencia and it's headed for the gap Stephen Vogt digging around third washes waving him home and Vogt will score four three eight. I would assume tomorrow Danny Valencia will be wearing the same socks. <laughs> He's having a great night. The A's give up the lead in the hanging breaking ball from the right hander and the gap in the left center. And he's thrown a lot of curveballs tonight, has Duffy, and this one a hanger. And Valencia, a home run to right field on a fastball. This curveball hit solidly into left center field. And don't go to sleep on the speed of Stephen Boat. Blow a whistle, man. That's, you know, there's such a thing as running fast or running hard. And I think we just saw hard. <laughs> <laughs> he made it. He made it. Making it and running just hard enough and fast enough to get there. So Valencia, a hot hitter again. A walk, a homer, and a double tonight. Davis tonight has singled and he has hit a fly ball in the left field. Sir Camp was hoping to get through five innings. He had two outs in the fifth with a lead and could not stay in long enough. Because if he'd gotten the final out, he would have had the lead and this man on by the athletics, but Stevenson. <laughs> you know, it is a long way from first to home. And you're not. You're not easing into it either. Yeah. And the good thing for Vody is the fact that there's nobody out and he gets to rest. And if he could call for oxygen, he would. But Davis waves at that breaking ball. Uh, the hanger and hit it perfectly. Stephen Vogt just well, he knows he has to score. It's not, it's like running a race and you cross the finish line and have a couple of bottles of water. <laughs> so one out here is Alonzo. He would love to get Valencia home. Hit hard but foul. That is Buddy Boucher. That's the way I was told it's pronounced. Boucher. Looks like Broche is there for a minute. <laughs> Buddy Boucher. Outside, and it's one and one to Alonzo, who has grounded out and struck out.
little bit outside. Duffy mm. thought it was a strike. Tim Timmons has called so many of them tonight. Surprised he didn't call that one. As Jed Lauer was called out on strikes his last at bat, last inning, and put the camera on Mr. Timmons. He said, "That's enough." Because <laughs> Jed was arguing with him a little bit. Missed again, three and one. Teams have had plenty of base runners tonight. They have nine hits. Alonzo broke his bat. One after a 3 1 breaking ball. He's retired. It's amazing. So Valencia the third now with two out. How many curveballs have been thrown tonight by Duffy, or better yet, how many have been called by Kurt Suzuki? Three and one and three and two. Really a lot of similarities, although Duffy is right handed, but Rich Hill is very comfortable throwing the breaking ball, the curveball, in the three one, three two counts. See if Simeon can come up with a two out hit. Got a breaking ball and hung a little bit. Simeon fouled it at the plate. Same in a single and a strikeout. So two for five in the series. That's a good pitch right on the corner. 0 and 2. So closing in on 100 pitches for Tyler Duffy. That is why there is action in the bullpen. Another breaking ball and Suzuki with that pretty good form blocking. And you're right, that gives the pitcher the confidence to throw the curveball. Suzuki very adept at, at blocking balls, doing the job, and really helps a pitcher. So, really, there has not been an easy inning for Tyler Duffy. Foul ball. This is what you call pitching backwards. Fastball in the one two count. Curveball in a three one count. Although curveball here on a one two count. A good take by Simeon. Of time in the stretch in this game for Duffy. And another breaking ball. Simeon just got a piece of it. Well, it has a hanger to a good hitable curveball. Two strikes, though, just a little bit of protecting. See the wrap by Duffy and the curveball, and Suzuki. So I have chin guards, although Suk down on one knee on the left knee with the runner at third base and two strikes on the hitter. Blocks it again, three and two. Coughlin to follow, maybe. And he's throwing the curveball on three and two pretty consistently tonight. All strikeouts coming on the curveball. He's going to get another one. And there it is, and it's belted toward left center, and that's going to get down for a hit. And that's going to go near the wall, and Simeon has an RBI double, and it's 5-3. to three. He hung it up there, and Simeon smacked it into the gap. And what if you have a catcher who is blocking the balls in the dirt, why you would think about Tried to throw it for a strike, and maybe he didn't just throw a lot of them. And that's a hanger, just like the one Valencia got with a double to left center. And Marcus Simeon does the same. A complete gap in left center. No chance for anybody to get it. And big two out hit on a 3 2 curveball by Marcus Simeon. So when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change, tune up and break experts.
baseball movie fireworks presented by Ray Morgan Company. After the game against the Angels, famous fireworks show will be set to music from classic baseball movies, including the natural Bull Durham, Field of Dreams, and more. No better way to kick off summer than with A's baseball and fireworks. So visit athletics.com slash fireworks today, June 17th, Friday night. It's the weekend of Father's Day. For Tyler Duffy, four and two thirds, ten hits, five runs, a walk, and six strikeouts. And he could not find an easy inning. So the Twins to the bullpen. This is Buddy Boucher. Just his second appearance. One of three lefties in the bullpen. Twins got a bunch of relievers right now because they put Phil Hughes in the bullpen. A good friend Fernando Abad is pitching yeah. well for them. Good numbers. Another lefty. Not close. And the count one and one to the pinch hitter Jake Smolinski. He is hitting for Coglin. Smolinski will stay in the game and play right field. Taps that one back to Boucher. Flips the first side retired but a couple of big hits in the inning started with Danny Valencia his RBI double and then Simeon with an RBI double of his own so the A's score twice and take a 5 3 lead. Back. Back and forth game. It's five to three. And Jake Smolinski stays in the game in right field after pinch hitting for Coglin. And Ryan Dole stays out on the mound. So Dole will face Suzuki, Buxton, and Nunez, top of the sixth inning. First pitch is driven towards center. Burns is there and he's got it. So a hard hit ball by Suzuki, but it ends up in the glove of Burns for the first down. It's amazing what Ryan Dull has done for the Athletics and what he did last September. Probably one of the the best yeah, from Bob Melvin's standpoint. Kurt Young and making the ball club coming out of the bullpen, especially with his success rate with runners in scoring position. Buxton takes a fastball that was close but a little low. Buxton has struck out and hit a fly ball to center field. Another fastball that one is a strike. So we're a ways away from a final. But right now Ryan Dole is the pitcher of records. He is could get a win. Yep. There's a liner 
down the left field line and Buxton can absolutely fly. So he easily makes it to second base with a one out double. Hanging slider it's left it up in the eyes and it's amazing how well hitters hit hanging in mistakes and. Ball up. And he can run as you said and. Long strides. He can take the wide turn in the outfield it wouldn't matter. <laughs> now batting number nine. Eduardo Nunez. Yeah he could take the back streets and <laughs> you and I could take the freeway. <laughs> still he would still get there before us. Zepchinski starts to throw. As Eduardo Nunez steps up. Nunez has singled and doubled. He's two for three with a run score. Swinging a hot bat. Be careful with this guy. Dozier to follow. Angels still leading the Tigers. It's nine to four in the bottom of the sixth inning. Swing and a miss. Right. Nunez was trying to tie up the game. He does have five home runs. A chance to waste a pitch. Yeah. A hard slider went inside with a fastball, but the slider needs to get on top and drive the ball down. Pretty good breaking ball there. Nunez did a nice job of fighting it off. Yeah. Almost looked like he kind of shortened up yeah. and maybe he's feeling like he didn't have to shorten up quite that much. But just the fact that he was shortening up with two strikes is smart hitting. As we have noted probably a few more guys would be better off by doing it instead of swinging hard on three or with two strikes. That would indicate a fastball up. It's kind of hard to go through a series of signs of runner second and the last sign is pointing up <laughs> which you're not going to call for a curveball yeah. or a slider up so it's a fastball but that's about the only way you can give the sign. And now it's two and two. Twins scored one in the second, one in the third, and one in the fifth. They have had base runners in every inning except the first. Lowry getting back, and Lowry's got it. Two outs, and here's Dozier. Now batting. Dozier is 0 for 2. Ryan a strikeout and a Dozier. ground out, and he was hit by a pitch in the third inning. Dozier, good swing there. Dozier just. Not having a great year. Last year, 28 home runs and 77 RBIs. And he had some big home runs. Yeah. And for Paul Molitor with the 83 wins you mentioned, and his production, especially some of the huge home runs, walk offs, and I mean, just some magical big hits for the, for the Twins. He had 39 doubles, four triples, and 28 home runs. An all star. I mean, if my Do math serves me correctly, that's 71 extra base hits. That's a lot. One and two. Just another guy having a down year for the Twins. The high fastball and you know, a lot of hits to the right side and just has that tendency to open up a little bit, which struggle. You try to gear it up a little bit sooner and start your swing a little sooner. Popped up right over our head into the the value deck right above us. 
There's a few people up there. Friday night, when it is a Friday night, and the A's are home. What do you do? Get his ball and go home? He's out. Left. He said, I got my foul ball on. I'm out of here. It's a good game, five to three. Yeah. Still think every time a ball goes to the upper deck above us, Glenn Hubbard always wanted to do that. That's all he said I ever want to do is foul the ball straight back to go to the upper deck. Not easy to do. Yeah, here. no, I and mean, every time that happens, I think of Glenn Hubbard many years ago, and he just couldn't do it. This one is playable. Alonzo near the mound. He's got it. And Dull gets out of the jam. A runner stranded. Bottom of the sixth inning. Now one of those. Five three. He's lead. <laughs>highlights Ray that's Ron Washington played for the twins from 1981 to 1986 played in 454 games with the twins check it out look at wash take a look at the hair wash also played with the Dodgers the Orioles and the Indians but most of his big league time was spent with the Minnesota twins played a little outfield too Good highlights. And you know his starting position was a catcher. And he said, I was too small. <laughs> <laughs> Time to get out of there. But Wash, of course, you saw the, the base hit that he got driving in his good friend, the late Kirby Puckett. And of course, when Puck passed away, they had a memorial service for him back at the Petrodome. And Wash was there on hand for that sad moment. Great Kirby Puckett. Touch them all, Kirby. You'll never hit a bigger home run. Oh, he did it too. Game six and 91. They jump on my back. I'll carry it to game seven, and Jack Morris took care of the rest. Oh, two pitch to Burns. He held up. So, Buddy Boucher is the pitcher. Says triple and single. And he strikes out this time. And Burns does not strike out a lot. That's just the 21st time this year he has struck out. So one out here in the sixth. But a hanging breaking ball just could not make contact. Stay back, waited, and went the string and just no contact for Billy Burns. So here's Coco. Crisp is grounded out, struck out, and he reached on a fielder's choice, and he takes a first pitch that's a bit high. Everything's final now in the American League, except that game going down, going on down in Anaheim. 
National League is all done as well. The Mariners beat the Padres today. It's Michael Tonkin, the big tall right hander, loosening up. Mariners 16, the Padres 4 in Seattle. See the final pitcher? 16 to 4. I believe it was a position player, yeah. wasn't it? Had a 69 mile hour curtain knuckleball. Someone said he's throwing 97 with a fastball, so that's quite a, a difference between the pitches. Coco drives one toward right. Arcia on the move. And he's got it for out number two. Now the Mariners just went crazy. They hit five home runs. Seth Smith hit a couple. Seeger hit one. Lynn. Now batting second base. Number eight. And James Jeff Shields, who I'm starting to hear his name in trade rumors, which is not a surprise. He gave up 10 earned runs in two and two thirds innings. So the Mariners get their 30th win. Mariners are now 30 and 21. Now, as we said, that's one of those two and two series going on. So those first two games were played in Seattle. Both teams will now fly to San Diego and they will continue that series at Petco Wednesday and Thursday. Natural rivalry. Like, well, well like they, I told you they don't like each other. Right? Houston, Arizona. I mean, you think about the history going back over the years between the Mariners <laughs> and the Padres. How far are you going back? Uh, just, you know, as far <laughs> back as you can. <laughs> Is that before they moved to Petco and they were walk on? Two teams that clearly do not like each other. <laughs> what a rivalry it's been over the years. <laughs> Mariners and the Pods. One and two the count to Lowry. Lowry has singled, grounded out, and struck out. Fastball is inside. Padres are really struggling this year. They have now lost eight out of their last nine and they're 13 games under 500. So a full count to Lowry. Zajinski still standing out in the A's bullpen. He is loose. Curveball. And a good one. And Lowry strikes out for the second time. So Boucher has a three up, three down, sixth inning. And we are moving to the seventh, 5 3 A's lead. Right choice. Remember this? The truck around the bases. Game two of the division series, A's Twins 2006. Mark Kotze says, I gotta go. My shirt's coming out. I'm leaking oil. I got a flat tire, but I'm gonna score. And he did. Awesome. 
game. The A's won the game five to two. A couple days later, they came home and finished off the Twins in that best of five series. He remembers it. Yes, he does. And he said when he saw Torrey Hunter dive for the ball and miss it, and on the artificial surface at the Metrodome with nobody to back up, go. he put it in a high horse. Saw it's Ron Washington coaching third then in 2006. He said, I was going to go. And watch this happen to be sending me, and I was going to go anyway. Joe Maurer and Osvaldo Arcia. And when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and auto service, your oil change tune up and brake expert. So, Subjinski, appearance number 25. Valencia has it. I think we had a pretty good idea this was going to be a bullpen game. Is it Fernando Rodriguez up again for the third time this time, though? Maybe doing it for a reason. Sitsinski following Ryan Dahl. Sitsinski has done a tremendous job for the A's. One of the new additions to the bullpen. There is Hughes. Here's Arcia. Good breaking ball. 0 on one count. You know, seeing that highlight, that was from 2006. And really, there's a stretch where the A's and the Twins had a lot of success. Of course, the A's had the four straight trips to the postseason and then went back again in 2006. But it was a great time for the Twins. From 2002 to 2010, they had a nine year period where they went to the postseason six times, but they couldn't yeah. get to the World Series. They always came up short. But if you want to go back a little bit further, 87, they won. The yeah. Twins won the World Series. Then 88, 89, 90, A's went to the World Series. 91, the Twins yeah. won. Well, 92, was, 93, the A's. Great game. Yeah, so I mean, they were. And it, they were in the same division. Exactly. Twins and the A's going through really from 87 to 93. Yeah, one Good of history. the history. Yeah. Tom Kelly years and Ron oh, Gardenheimer. Yeah. Eddie Gardado, who is the bullpen coach for the Twins, of course, very prominent during those years with Tom Kelly, is everyday Eddie, they called him. Jinsky strikes out RC. Yeah, I said, uh, Eddie, how many games consecutively did you pitch? It's this breaking ball outside and big swing. Eddie said nine in a row. Number 24. Said I gave one. That's what I call him every day, Eddie. But nine games in succession. I bet they were in the pennant race too. And he said I was up for the tenth. <laughs> <laughs> There's Eddie Gardado and Stockton native, of course, uh, lives down in Southern California now, and in the bullpen for Paul Molitor. You get a nickname every day, Eddie. Pitch nine consecutive games. <laughs> Got to live up to that. That's name. right, and he was happy to do it. I said, Eddie, how are things today? And he said, a little bit different. Yeah. It's a good man. Good man. He'd always have his family, friends, everybody when he was pitching come down from Stockton and between here and Dallas Braid to have a lot of people. It's one of the good names in Twins history, Eddie Gardano. Yeah. One and one the count to Trevor Plouffe. Good pitch one and two. The Twins were the Washington Senators for 60 years, and then in 1961 they moved to Minneapolis. In the Twins. And if you've ever been to the Ball of America, that's where the stadium <laughs> that's right. was. That's right. Matter of fact, home plate is still there in the middle of Ball of America from the old Met. Metropolitan Stadium. Yep. The Vikings played there. The Twins played. Two and two the count. Ploof is one for two with a hit by pitch and a single. Got him swinging. 
Nice inning by Mark Zipchinski. Couple of strikeouts, and we have reached the seventh inning stretch here at the Coliseum. The A's leading five to three. in California is brought to you by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience TV. I think A's fans enjoying the seventh inning stretch, don't we all? 5-3 A's lead. We're trying to Build a little winning streak here. That would be nice. That would be nice. Right now they're six games under 500. It's June 1st is tomorrow, so yeah. put together a little win streak, and then you have a good month of June. That's right. Maybe get to the All-Star break, and you're around 500. Or just like I say, make August and September interesting right. if you can. Make them meaningful. That's right. Meaningful game, something the A's definitely don't have last year. Try to avoid losing a hundred, which they were able to do. But that's your scorebook. That Stephen Vogt has scored two runs in front of Danny Valencia's home run and double. Uh -oh. well, Stephen Vogt called out on strikes. Well, that's the first out here in the seventh. Well, tune in to NBC Sports Network tomorrow as the Sharks and the Penguins play Game 2 of the Stanley Cup Finals. Coverage begins at 3 p.m. with a two-hour pregame show. And game 2 starts at 5 p.m. And it's over. Head over to CSN California after the game for Sharks Playoff Central. Don't miss a moment of this Sharks Stanley Cup journey. So the Penguins won 3-2 last night, so they lead the series one game. To none. When it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and break experts. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. Now pitching for the Twins.
Ace Baseball in CSN California is brought to you by Roaring Camp Railroads. It's roundup time. Take the beach train to Santa Cruz or the Redwood Forest train to Bear Mountain. So 5-3 A's lead. It is the bottom of the seventh. And the Twins bring in the right-hander Michael Tonkin. Tall with a good sinking fastball. Low 90s for the right-hander. 22nd game. Been busy. Three plus earn run average. And the first pitch from Tonkin in first strike. Facing Danny Valencia, who has had a big night. He walked in the first, hit a two run homer in the third, doubled in a run, and then scored in the fifth. So three RBIs tonight. Home run to right field on a fastball that was left up. Three one, he went deep to right field. That was against Duffy, the starter. Misses, so the count two on one. So maybe Danny Valencia starting to heat up. Well, you know, not maybe he is. Batting average at 339. That one on the outside corner, two and two. So Valencia's home run on a fastball away from him. Nine strikeouts for the Athletics against actually the pitchers for the Twins, but that last strikeout that for sure struck out both is the only one with a fastball. Eight on the curveball. That's all Suzuki calling curveballs and the pitchers, of course, with the confidence to throw the curveball. And Suzuki keeps putting down the two fingers and once well, tonight, regardless of the pitchers, it's been a good pitch. It's a fastball here. And it's belted to left down the line. Plenty of distance, but foul. I think he was looking fastball. I think he was, and it sounded like he was looking fastball because that was loud. Foot down, fastball just too quick. And you're looking at a low mid 90s fastball, and second deck, put the glove out. Put the hand down. Or your I mean, hat, yeah. Yeah, didn't have his glove up that high. And then he drives one toward right field. Arcia on the move, and he'll get there and make the catch. That's a pretty good at bat by yeah. Danny Valencia, though. So he lines out. So May home run leaders in Major League Baseball. Davis is first. Adam Duvall from the Reds. We'll see him next weekend. Ortiz with nine, Trumbull with nine. Ortiz with 14 on the season. Huh. He's retiring though. He's done. Remember when he got off to that slow start? Was it? That was like four years ago, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> and all of a sudden, the Boston folks thought maybe it was time. Poppy didn't think so. No. The Rangers beat the Indians 7 to 3 in Cleveland. Colby Lewis is now 5 and 0. So the Rangers are playing extremely well. They have won 9 out of their last 11 and 4 in a row. So that is the updated West. Both the Rangers and the Mariners win. Astros won. I'll tell you what happened in that game in a little bit. And what you don't like to see is the Rangers and the Mariners starting to separate a little bit. Doesn't mean that there's not plenty of time. Two two pitch not close three and two. The Rangers with that win today finished the month of May with 17 wins. You start getting over 15 wins in a month. That's pretty good. Yeah. That one rolled foul. Giants have had a big month of May. I think today was their 21st win in the month of May. That's very hard to do. So 
Tonkin and Davis having a pretty good battle. And he misses outside, so 95 mile an hour fastball, but not close. And Davis walks. Now batting first baseman, number 17, Yonder Alonso. So here's Yonder Alonso. A couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Straight up defense. No shift. Davis runs. Throw to second base is late. Chris Davis got a good jump. He gets speed and he's got a stolen base. And that's his first of the year. Well, he got the great jump and the big leg kick by Tonkin and Kurt Suzuki. Quick release, but absolutely zero chance. Even the throws on the bag, he has no chance. Well, you watch Davis get a good jump and show pretty good speed. That's You're right. surprised he doesn't steal more. A little bit outside in the count one and one. Outs here in the bottom of the seventh. That game is getting a little weird down in Anaheim. The Angels had a nine to four lead. But Ian Kinsler just hit a grand slam. And now it's nine to eight. Wow. And it's the seventh inning, so there's plenty of time left. Angels thought they were going to be in for one of those. One of those games, you know, where you can take your starter, take your position. Big <laughs> trout out, Pujols, give him a couple innings off. One Not swing of the bat. Not anymore. Swing by Alonzo. Ahead of Alonzo, and that one in the dirt. For the Twins in the top of the eighth, they'll have Grossman, Park, and Suzuki. Six, seven, and eight in their order. Fastball outside. 96 miles an hour. I don't know if it's so much the ball running away from the left hander or just leaving it out there. I can throw him very hard against the right hander Davis, threw it outside off the plate. Missed again and he walked in. So back to back walks with two outs. So another meeting for Kurt Suzuki Marcus. trying to work his young right hander through this. All part of the life of a catcher. Yeah. It's almost like with the 3 2 pitch to Alonzo at curveball. If you get him fine, if not, don't worry about it. So Marcus Simeon trying to get one of the fastballs or another hanging curveball like he did in his last at bat. Get a ball in the gap. First ball, first strike. I would guess there are times when the catcher goes out there and there's certain things he would really like to say, but he probably <laughs> says the exact opposite. That's why you have to know your personnel. <laughs> For a catcher to know all the personalities of the 12 pitchers you're dealing with. Some you, you mean none are the same? I'd say there's a pretty good chance there are some that you have to speak softly. Yeah. And others scream and don't have to worry about any repercussions. <laughs> Got to know all of them. They're, they're all sitting together. 0 2 pitch. Here it is. Close, but outside.
Davis at second, Alonzo at first. Foul to the screen, so I can plenty of velocity there. There's a good young Twins fan. If you knew he's who, he's looking a little tired though. If you knew who Rod Carew and Tony Oliva, Harmon Keller Brew, all those guys, he'd really be a fan, but maybe a little bit too young. More of the current Twins. And he had that. I gotta go to school tomorrow. Look, yeah, starting to get a little tired. The late great Harmon yeah, Keller, one of the nicest gentlemen in the world, man. The killer, former A's announcer. Yes, he was. He wore the twins uniform proudly. High and foul toward the seats and into the seats. This makes you wonder, well, shouldn't he have been a twins announcer? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Actually ended up back there after he was here, but well, I don't know how much work he did on TV or radio. It's always those nice guys that had over 500 home runs too. Two two pitch, and that one does catch the corner. Strike three call. So a couple of walks, they're both stranded, and we're headed to the eighth inning here at the Coliseum. Let's go five three A's. Eighth inning, and it's Fernando Rodriguez coming in. And he's facing Robbie Grossman, leading things off. 1 0 with a good 2.03 ERA for Rodriguez, having a nice season for the A's. Grossman, Park, and Suzuki. Grossman has a double and a triple. Doubled and scored in the second, tripled in a run in the fifth. He hits that one hard, but it's just foul. Keep 
big Trevor May loosening up out of the Twins bullpen. May's bullpen is quiet. That may be appropriate for May to get in in the month of yeah, May. That's right. Better especially, hurry up. Especially the final day of the month of May. It's getting late. June is around the corner. Now Fernando's got the good fastball, of course, curve and a cutter. But right now, I don't think he wants to go to three and two where he would throw the fastball, see what he decides to do on the two and two. We have a good fastball, and just if you can elevate, it makes it a very, very difficult pitch for a hitter. Fastball there, Grossman was looking for it, but just a little tardy. These guys might have been teammates in Houston. Good call, yeah. It was, uh, Maybe in the minor leagues. Yeah. Fernando coming over from Houston, and Grossman, of course, playing for them. Maybe Grossman said, I don't remember him throwing that hard. <laughs> Curveball, and he lines one fair down the right field line. Yep. Smolinski picks it up. He remembered the curveball and <laughs> tried to throw it two strikes. Yeah, he just went down and got that breaking ball. And this is much slower than his mid 90s fastball, and that's why, with a couple of strikes, we talked about hitters who shorten up a little bit. Grossman that time able to get out in front of pull the curveball. Young Ho Park. So it was. Third to night for Grossman. All three to right field. So here's Park. Park doubled in a run in the second. He has also popped out and struck out. And that one misses off the plate outside. Well, the Twins trying to make it interesting. Yesterday. Axford had the seventh. Doodle actually came in with two outs on the seventh, got the third out, and then pitched the eighth. Matt to the ninth, and just a one run game. This at least has two runs. Pretty well hit right center, but it's going to hang up for Burns, and Burns makes the catch. Grossman will tag. He'll go to third. So one out. And the hitter will be Suzuki. So Park hit that ball Number fairly eight. well, but Number eight, Kurt Suzuki. Now the fastball that was a little bit inside, I think that's at least what kept it in the park. Inside out swing. Even though the count was one and oh, he still swung at it. So the A's will give up the run on a ground ball. Pitch to Suzuki, and that's a base hit left center field. So Kurt Suzuki does not wait around. First pitch he saw, fastball down around the knees, and now it's five to four. And just one out. Now about exactly right. Now, you know, Fernando might have been thinking, trying to get the strikeout, but. Bottom line, fastball that Suzuki, he just wanted to put the ball in play and he was able to do it. Looks like Axford is getting up. First pitch to Buxton, pulls the bat back, no swing. And Axford just now starting to throw, but as you can tell, getting ready quickly. Buxton doubled in the sixth. He was stranded. Valencia cheats in onto the grass. Swing and a miss. Buxton pulled off that one. That's a much better, a much harder curveball than the one he threw to Grossman that he get the double. It's a slower curveball. This one harder, and that's ideally what you want to do. As hitters will gear fastball and they see the breaking pitch. If it's thrown hard, they cannot adjust the swing quickly enough. 
high fastball and Buxton can't catch up to that one 0 and 2 and make it 1 and 2. Yeah, curveball down fastball up. Swing there almost like he was looking curveball again. Two pitch is in the dirt. The Astros won tonight. They beat the Diamondbacks in Arizona. McCullers over Corbin. So the Astros have now won seven out of their last eight. And they're looks like the A's. They're trying to get back to 500. The D backs are struggling. Yeah, they are. Pop foul, jammed in the fastball. See the difference there, the location of fastball that time was down and he fouled it. Fastball that was up. He swung through with the second strike. That's why Sean Doolittle is so good. If he can elevate his fastball the way he does pretty consistently, it is just make it difficult to catch up to it. Long run. Smolinski cannot quite get it. Drops foul. So everybody was over there. Lowry, Alonzo, Smolinski. Nobody could get it. Well, Smolinski diving, even though the ball was well out in front of him, but in foul territory, might as well give it a chance. Never know. Eduardo Nunez is the on deck hitter. One's bounce just foul past Gene Glenn, third base coach for the Twins. Looks like Axford's ready. Defense is straight up for the A's. That is perfectly straight up in it. It is. Draw a picture. So you keep that. Yeah. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Buxton chased a pitch that looks like it may have been a ball. Got enough pitches inside, and then Fernando with a good fastball away and just kept running. And that's a protecting swing, knowing that the pitch is close enough off the plate, as that shot shows. However, from the hitter standpoint, you panic just trying to make no, contact. Could not do it. It's actually a great pitch Junior. by Rodriguez. So here's Nunez. The outfield playing no doubles. That's a good idea. Suzuki at first. And Alonzo hustling over and it'll bounce in the first first row right behind the twins dugout. <laughs> I don't, wanna, I don't threw, know what's going he on. He threw now. his cap out on the, on the field. He got it back I think. I hope so. At least he didn't throw the baseball he said heck with the cap. There's an usherette down there, and she is laying down the law, man. <laughs> <laughs> Another foul ball, and the count is 0 and 2. It was a Giants. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on down there. Yeah. <laughs> Guys want to. Think about getting in a brawl, arguing with each other, pointing at each other. Look out. One and two now to Nunez. Did he get that Giants hat back? <laughs> I don't know if he got back. <laughs> Looked kind of old and beat up anyway. <laughs> Out 
right side to Nunez. Nunez has a single and a double. He's 15 for his last 31, so he's a dangerous hitter right now. Well, there's a reason you play deep in the outfield, especially with two outs, runner at first with a hot hitter, and that's to keep a ball from getting into the gap. You see how deep the outfielders all around are playing. Straight up, but deep. Suzuki with his lead to two pitch got him swinging chased a pitch in the dirt so Rodriguez a couple of big strikeouts the twins get one as we go to bottom of the eighth it's now five to four. is presented by authority of the Oakland Athletics and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. Game Semi brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. 4-11 and 1 for the Twins, 5-10 and 0 for the Athletics. Both the starters, Duffy and Surkamp, did not get through the fifth inning. Danny Valencia, he's a hot hitter right now. And a couple of hits and three RBIs, including a home run. Billy Burns, a couple of hits. So the A's, three outs away from their fourth consecutive win. Twins bring in another pitcher, Trevor May. Pitcher number four from Minnesota. 0 and 2 with an ERA over 5 for Trevor May. Speaking of starters, he was a starter and so possesses all the four pitches and a pretty good fastball that he likes to throw mid 90s, but has moved on. Actually, Buck Showalter and the Orioles would take a lot of starting pitchers and put them in the bullpen. Fastball is high. Trevor Mays. Big kid. Fernando Obad. 20 pounds lighter, Fernando Obad. That's good. He's having a good year, too. Yes, he is. One two pitch. There's that high fastball, and he did not go. Trevor May, six foot five, 245 pounds. Throwing hard. 16 starts last year. Nothing but fastballs in the four pitches to Smolensky. I guess they figured Jake's going to pull a 96 mile hour fastball. They're shifting him to left. He's a good heater again. You know, if I were a pitcher throwing 96, I'd say, how can you even think about shifting and expecting him to pull my heater? <laughs> Turn around and say, get back over in your normal position, man. Come on. There they are, though. There. Take that outside fastball at 96 and pull it. 
And he lines one just foul. I see I thought it was fair. He picked it up ready to throw it back in. Burns to follow and then crisp here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Day game tomorrow to wrap up this homestand. Anaya and Dean. That's Pat Dean. Strike three called at the knees. So that is out number one here in the bottom of the eighth. Here we got in depth sports news for the Bay Area fan. Know it all with Sportsnet Central. It's brought to you by Hyundai. It's tonight at 10 30 and it's on CSN Bay Area. A complete analysis of the NBA Finals matchup between the Cavs and the Warriors. Also hear from LeBron James as he gets set to face the Warriors for the second year in a row. And the Sharks will try to even up that series at a game apiece. Met free Dave Heldman will, Feldman will host them. There's a lot going on in the Bay Area. John Axford looks like he's going to be asked to try to at least start the ninth and maybe close it. Fernando Rodriguez getting a couple of big strikeouts, especially the last one. Speaking of strikeouts, the ace hitters have struck out 11 times tonight. Hasn't kept them from scoring five runs because they also have 10 hits. Good curveball there from Trevor May. Down in Anaheim, the game has just gotten even more wild. Remember, the Tigers were down 9 4. Kinsler hit a grand slam in the top of the seventh to make it 9-8. Victor Martinez just hit a solo home run in the top of the eighth, and that game is now tied 9-9. In fact, the Tigers have the go-ahead run at second base in that game. Just when you think it's over, the Tigers start swinging the big bats. Well, as we said, when they left Oakland, let them swing down there, yeah. especially Miguel Cabrera. You know, Victor Martinez is going to hit as he's proven tonight. Kinsler. And there's the walk. So, a little bit more on the matchup tomorrow. Pat Dean is a left hander. <laughs> Make it just his third start. Now, will make his seventh start. Trying to whittle that ERA down. And again, that'll be a 12 30, 12 35 first pitch. And you can see it on the MLB network tomorrow. You can also hear it in 95.7 the game with Ken, Vince, and Ray. Now we're not televising, obviously, but for Sean and I, I said, "What is the song when you walk out?" And he said, "I don't know." Really? Yeah, he so said. He, he so said, "Just pick else one for me. me. <laughs> pick one for me." I said, "Is it Samoan related?" He said, "No, but that would be nice, wouldn't it?" I said, "Well, it's you can pick your own. It's crazy you know, whatever you want to do." But but he said, "I have no idea." Mm. So I guess they just decided to pick one yeah. for him. So if it's the same one tomorrow. I hope he at least calls. I mean, he's, he's you know, he's established. Sure. He's a big leaguer. Yeah. In the big leagues. Whatever gets you going before you start, right? That's right. I could see you listen to a little Neil Diamond since you're ready for your start. <laughs> hey, we, <laughs> we didn't even <laughs> dream about walk out. No walk up song. No. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, David down here and you know, Chuck Morgan down in Texas and he says you know guys go over for one they call up change my song, change my song. You know? <laughs> go over for the day I need to do song. That's the problem. Right? Yeah that's it. You know the song is the big thing he's going to let you hit man. I mean sometimes you get pitcher credit. Oh one one two. Looked like Coco was taken all the way. Well taken maybe thinking uh, Burns going to try to steal and he should why not I mean take the chance and. I mean, this is this is the Ricky run that Beacon create, uh, created here, and right-handed he throws well, but did a good jump and try to get in a scoring position. 
be easier to score from second. Yeah, I mean this. This seems like a yeah. the spot where he's got to try to go. And even if there's a pitch out, I mean, you, you, you still go. I mean, get to, you're able to read him. He just drew a throw so he could pick the have an idea of actually how he does throw to first and to the plate. Not a sign. That's a throw over. Wow, swing and a miss. Five three two. That was interesting. Usually that's a, a throw over. That's not a normal sign, especially nobody on base. But two is a curveball, and Garrett Suzuki has called a lot of those tonight. Running and the ball is looped foul just past the tarp. Rolls in between the tarp and the sidewall, and a fan is now in between the tarp and the sidewall. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on tonight, Ray? <laughs> well, the seagulls got all their seeds, so the I guess. Seagulls are gone. Yeah, they're gone. And how did that guy get that ball, by the way? He had a glove, a beer, but he got the ball. Yeah. I don't know how he did Check that. Check it out. He missed the ball. He's going to go over. And he had a beer somewhere. <laughs> oh, no. He didn't pick that up from down there. Oh, my God. <laughs> he went over with no beer. And came back, came with, back the with the beer. One, with a full cup. <laughs> There's a lot <laughs> wrong with that. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Coco. Will not be happy with that at bat. A short breaking ball. Now Paul Molitor is going to make another move. He's going to Fernando. He's going to turn Lowry around. Okay. See, look, our yeah, guy, no, no beer, beer right now. There he, he is nothing that. in his hand. Oh no, he got the guy oh, on the left. He took his beer. So he somehow, the other guy, got, got the, the ball, ball. He got but gave him the beer. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> so down underneath the tarp, there was a deal made and it lasted about three seconds. <laughs> How did that happen? Wins. It's a good game. We've had some laughs tonight. See, the guy actually tried to make the exchange. I'll have my beer for the ball. No, that's not happening. <laughs> it's just, I'll take it. So, the guy with the shirt on the right lost his beer and the ball. And the baseball. 
That's hilarious. Oh man. And he gone. <laughs> now, meanwhile, Fernando turns Lowry about to bat right handed. Fernando Abad. First pitch is outside. Well, you're right about losing some weight. Yeah. He looks a lot different. 20 pounds. We're not saying he had to, but he just looks a lot yeah. different. Look at the numbers. Lefty's hitting 0 43 against him. He had to make their club, too. He was uh, invite and made the club. Breaking ball. Man, that's a strike. You know, last year with the A's, he did struggle. And as it turned out, he said he did not go to winter baseball before the 2015 season and struggled. Well, thanks, Fernando. <laughs> of all years not to go, <laughs> you, you pick a year when you're going to be with the A's and then decide to go back. And in the spring training, made the team for the Twins and obviously pitching well. There's a bug bunny. And it's ripped into left field for a hit. Well, Lowry waited on it and he gets his second hit. The Jed's seen enough curveballs tonight and off speed pitches. Struck out a couple of times on curveballs. Fastball to left center. There's the changeup and just right into this lower part of the strike zone in the wheelhouse. You see the front foot planting. Well, that's why, and again, Billy Burns must not have felt he could get a jump with the right hander. But when well, you get to second base, so much easier. And so the right hander. Smooth delivery. Eddie Gardano's been busy. He's been every day, Eddie, in the bullpen. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, he is. So many relievers. Abad is the fifth pitcher in this game. And now he faces vote. Two on, two out. He's looking to get that run that they gave back in the top of the eighth back. Drilled left center field and that'll get down for a hit and it goes to the wall one run scores here comes Lowry he will score vote comes through Boy, is that a big hit or what huge hit well Stephen vote caught Fernando Abad and you know it doesn't help necessarily a ball little cut on it and Stephen Volk, he has found a lot of hits in the left center field area. He does it again. And that's going to do it for Fernando, but what a great hit by Stephen Volk. So Volk, three hits tonight, a couple of RBIs, and the A's now lead seven to four. We got another pitching change. We'll be back. Ten of baseball from June 17th to the 19th. Mike Trout, Albert Pujols, Los Angeles Angels, and Bay Coliseum for an action-packed three-game series. Friday's game will feature post-game fireworks. While Sunday's contest is the perfect Father's Day gift for family time. Get your tickets now at athletics.com/tickets. That is a nice weekend of baseball. 
against the Los Angeles Angels. Here's Brandon Kinsler. No relation to Ian Kinsler. <laughs> so Valencia steps in. Valencia and Vote have done major yeah. damage tonight. They got five combined hits, and they've knocked in five runs combined. So they're doing their thing out of the three and four spots in the A's lineup. Valencia, two run homer and an RBI double. And that's a major broken bat, folks. So Valencia is retired, but the A's get a run on a couple of hits and a walk. Get two runs, excuse me, thanks to Stephen Vogt, 7-4. So a save situation and it's John Axford who will get the opportunity. He does not have a save this year. No very capable though. But he's been a closer he has 141 career saves so this is nothing new for him. He'll face Dozier Maurer and Arcia. Right. How huge were those two insurance. Oh, big big. Axford on the season, three and one with a 3.66 ERA. 21st appearance in 53 games for the A's. This is number 53. And how much we talked about the A's and for Bob Melvin and Kurt Young to have three closers. Should be the first out, and it is. To think about a night in which Yesterday, Matson pitched. Actually, Axford pitched. A couple of runners on base. Doolittle came in, an inning and third. Right. And then Ryan Matson closed Joe it out. Mauer. But tonight they turn back to Axford, who pitched yesterday. And so Doolittle and Matson looking for a night off tonight. And be ready tomorrow. And then the off day on Thursday. So a nice mixture of veteran guys in the bullpen. Well, after what Bob Melvin went through last year with the struggles of the bullpen, yeah. I thought it was nice. The front office gave him three closes. That's right. He deserves it. <laughs> it's no fun when you're the manager and your bullpen is not yep. good. What do they say? It's hard to be a good manager with a bad oh. bullpen. 
That's right. And one pitch to Maurer is low. Joe Maurer is one for four in this game. He has faced Axford six times in his career. He's three for six. A little bit low with a fastball at 97 miles an hour. It sure is a an easy 97. Oh, Doesn't really fair. look yeah. like he's throwing that hard. Well, I just think yesterday he was throwing 98. So back to back games. And that swing says it all right there. Fastball yep. away, good velocity, and Joe Maurer, good hitter, likes to go to left field, but. That pitch he couldn't pull anyway, or even think about putting it in play. Waldo Arcia is the on deck hitter. And there's a fastball up around the the letters, and Maurer lines it to center. So two for five night for Joe Maurer. Uh, Steven Vogt wanted away. It was away, but it was up. And it's pretty good hitting by Joe Maurer to be able to get on top of a, a good fastball. Waldo Arcia. And you're right, Cap. That two run double by Steven Vogt, making it a three run game, is huge for everybody concerned. Here's Oswaldo Arcia, his third at bat. He came in the game in the third inning. Miguel Sano, the big right fielder for the Twins, beat out a play at first base. He got an RBI on the fielder's choice, but he was hamstring a little bit, and he had to leave the game. Arcia came in. So I can't imagine Sano being in the lineup tomorrow. That's a big bat and a big loss for the Twins. Well, yesterday they lost Santana with a hamstring injury and big man trying to beat out avoid a double play he does but the left hamstring when he hit the bag and the seagulls flew and he went limping down the line and he said yeah that hurts so let's go that look of his eyes that he was asked how do you feel not good it's not a good thing to ask somebody just hobbled down the first baseline with a bad hamstring. <laughs> So Axford jumps ahead in the count one and two. Arcia has grounded out and he has struck out. A little bit outside 96 miles an hour. Ploof to follow. Axford is the 11th pitcher used tonight and actually the A's have used fewer than the twins which is hard to believe considering Sir camp just went four and two thirds innings missed again three and two. It's been Sir camp dull Sipchinski Rodriguez and now Axford. Dull went an inning and a third he was very good. Sipchinski had a good inning. Rodriguez gave up a couple hits and a run in the eighth. High fastball, no chance. Right past Darcia. And that's out number two here in the ninth inning. And in a battle like this, it has to be very frustrating for a manager, Hall of Famer, who had over 3,000 hits because he knows the importance of base runners. And batting, that pitch right there, that's ball four. Trevor clearly up, out of the strike zone. That puts two runners on base, the tying run of the plate. So that is something that. Sometimes very hard to manage when you've been good yourself as a player and then you manage and you see those but things. That's almost like just kind of not having a plan. Exactly. When you go up. Exactly. Toward right field. This should do it and it will. That's the ball game. So the Oakland A's have won 
four games in a row as they are now 24 and 29 and starting to play much better baseball. So they'll go for the sweep tomorrow afternoon of the Minnesota Twins. Tonight's game took three hours and 15 minutes. Paid attendance was 12,767. Final score from the Coliseum. It's the Oakland A7 and the Minnesota Twins 4.